Well, welcome back to another episode of Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's going on? Oh, Derek, I'm getting situated for the weekly episode. What are you drinking? Some Clyde Mays. All right. You got some more? Well, yeah, we got a whole bottle. Yeah, hell yeah. All right. Can I turn this off? It's 76 in here. Sure. Holy criminy. Listen. I'm sitting here getting blasted. Why are you turning it off? Why don't you just turn it down to 69, bro? Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're sitting here sweating. We're sweating. I mean, I'm not sweating. You had a hyperhidrosis problem? What is hyperhidrosis? It means your palms sweat. It means Whoa. that you're just a sweaty boy. My palms sweat when I get excited. That's true. That does happen. Like, they just get clammy? It's so, it all started when I met a man. Whoa. His last name was McLean. He's a parole officer down in the Bronx. Okay. Dudes, I mean, he's he calls himself the silverback. That's what he calls himself. He goes, I'm the silverback. How does this relate to hyperhidrosis? Listen, you gotta you gotta let me finish the story, Derek. There's a there's a method to the madness, okay? Okay. Sorry, if you're not watching on YouTube you should, but I had to reach for our eyedropper for a little bit of non homogenous homogenous stem lock leaf lock stem water. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, McLean used to listen to people that he was in charge of, okay? And when he was hearing things that weren't up to standard in his eyes, he used to literally say, mmm. Now, mind you, McLean, he calls himself a silverback, okay? He's obviously African American. He's built like a brick S house. Okay. Huge dude. Overcame a lot of racism in his professional career. Very successful in his own right. And he's a monster. Super good dude though. Really good moral compass. Really good ethics. Just a good solid dude. Mm -hmm. And he's listening to these stories about his, his subordinates telling him information about what it's really like on the ground. Right. And he's hearing this and he's sitting there and he's just like, Hmm. Hmm. Understood. Understood. Right? And he's sitting and he's he's huge. And he's like mm. and he's like leaning in. We're having lunch, right? There's a, there's a few of us. And he would sit there and he would literally push off from the table. And he would put his 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 forearms on his knees and he would just rock back and forth and then he looked up and he's got like these wolf eyes. And he just look through you and he goes Mmm, boy, you make my palm sweat. <laughs> and he goes, Mmm, you excite me. He's like, I love this. He's like, Ooh, you're making my palm sweat. And he got himself so fired up that as soon as we were done eating, he found the nearest pull up bar, did 20 perfect form dead man hang pull ups, and then he goes, All right, men, I gotta get to work. And then lo and behold, the next day, other people, not him, showed up and made all the changes. Because <laughs> behind closed doors, he's cracking skulls, and he's like, "This isn't, this isn't right. Fix this." So that's where your phrase, "My palms are sweaty," come from. Yes, oh, that okay. dude's an absolute savage, and he taught me a lot. And that, you know, you take you take things from people that you know you respect and you learn from and grow from, and it's. He was instrumental in certain elements regarding development, right? And he's just, he's a really, really good dude, but that's where it comes, he calls himself a silverback, and that's why. Like, he just, he he enforced change. Sure. Super good dude. That's interesting. So, back to hyperhidrosis. Do you actually <laughs> feel like you have it, or is that just like a phrase? Okay. If So, right now, when I was able to, like, do this, I was, you know, I, I worked myself up, so my palms started sweating. But it's not, I don't just randomly sweat because it's 7-Eleven, you know? It's just like not the a thing. Like the convenience store? Uh, like, are we talking Wilson Farms? Do you sweat in Wilson Farms? <laughs> not anymore. They close, <laughs> baby. <laughs> but no, I'm having a lot of fun. It's uh, So you're asking what's going on. We'll talk about it this week, uh, this weekly episode, and then we'll we'll probably, re probably do two. We'll probably do two weekly episodes, although new month, we need a new Patreon episode. So who knows? We'll see. We'll see. All today? I don't know if I got time for all that today. What do you mean? Your wife is sick. What else are you going to do? Go inside and... I got to make dinner because my wife's sick. What do you have to make? 
I don't know. I got to go inside to hear from my wife what I have to make. Why don't you just say, we're going to eat this, and then it's you ordering a pizza. What's wrong with that? Now, that is an idea. That's She knows we're recording. I'll text her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. So let me let me text her right now. Okay. So who's the camera on? You? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll stand by while you're texting her. Change. All right, all right. I'll talk about the business sponsors. Queen City Creative Works. Hey. Appreciate you. If you're new here, like, comment, subscribe. Okay. Queen City Creative Works is a local Buffalo business. They're essentially an Etsy shop, but they're kind of roided up. They make a lot of good branded products, especially some of ours, okay? They make bottle openers. This is a metal bottle opener wrapped in silicone. The table we're sitting at, okay? You can't necessarily see it on camera, but it's a branded table. You can see it in other photos and things that we've posted throughout our Instagram. But they're a married couple. They got kids. They got multiple dogs. They're trying to make it work. They're trying to force the American dream upon themselves. Make sure you, you know, follow them on Instagram. Make sure you buy their products through their website, Queen City Creative Works. They can make t-shirts, anything branded, things like that. They're just an awesome store. Derek and I both have used them for our own weddings. So they're just good people. Um, They're worth supporting and they, you know, they put a lot of pride and effort into their materials and their products. So feel free to support them at queencitycreativeworks.com. And then you can pick up our own products as well that are branded, and then you'll be all set. Outside of that, Addies, thank you so much for your logo. We always and obviously appreciate you guys So and gals. So, Derek. Yes, sir. How did that text go out? I, I sent it out. I said, "Do what do you? You're sick, so order out pizza?" Question mark. And she hasn't responded yet. All right, we'll see. So we'll see. We'll see. You suspect but my new shoes did get delivered, so we're good. We'll talk about that. All right. We'll talk about that. So we'll talk about the weekly recap after the uses fact. If you're new here, again, we've had multiple subscriber growth. Thank you for watching. We start every weekly episode with a uses fact. Today's uses fact. You ready? Yep. In 2003, two men from the Congo boarded an an empty Boeing 727. Things empty. No one knows what's going on. It was at an airport in Angola. Not our Angola, oh, a different I was, I was Angola. I say that's super ironic. Yeah. They then flew into the sunset. Okay, they flew into the sunset. Actually real romantic. I mean, I would fly into a sunset with you. Hell yeah. So it's two dudes flying into a sunset? Two two dudes fly into the sunset with a empty Boeing 727 out of the Angola airport. The FBI and the CIA conduct a massive search. Okay? Massive search. Neither the men or the plane were ever seen or heard from again. It's one of the largest aircraft ever to disappear. Now... My initial reaction after reading that is you mean you mean to tell me you're able to find Osama bin Laden <laughs> in a compound in a country we're not supposed to be in and you have that compound dialed in to such a degree that you can send operators in and they know where the interior walls, staircases and family members are in route to killing the number one most wanted man in the world. And you're telling me you can't find a massive empty Boeing 727 that flew into the sunset with two dudes from the Congo? So is Angola in the Congo? (coughs) I don't know where Angola is other than the Angola that we have in western New York. Regardless, you're telling me both major three-letter agencies can't find (laughs) an empty plane with two dudes in it? The FAA has got no response. Yeah, isn't there tracking on those? You would think. Hold on. How is it empty? Did they just go on an airstrip and steal it? Or was it like this crash and they were able to revive it? This is what's going to happen. That's the question. What's going to happen is we're going to be end up driving down this Google rabbit hole (laughs) trying to find any useless facts. First of all, look where Angola is. Okay, Because that's a pivotal part of the story. So 2003, disappear... Angola 727 disappearance. It's 727 a huge, is a huge plane. Massive, dude. Dude, it's it was a worldwide search. This is there's multiple Google searches on Reddit. 
Okay, it's literally called the Angola case. The unsolved case of Angola. On the 25th of May, 03, a Boeing 727 with registration, November 8, 44 Alpha Alpha, vanished out of thin air from International Airport in Luanda, Angola. Google that. Leading to a worldwide search by the FBI, CIA, U.S. Departments of State, Homeland Security, and CENTCOM. I, I mean, I don't understand how there is nothing about this. That's fascinating. <clears throat> I don't understand. So... Let me see what what else I can find. So, so Luanda is the so like, you know Africa, right? How it's kind of shaped like an upside down L, how it goes over and then down. Yeah. So Angola is a country in or a region in Africa, country whatever, in Africa that is like in that second part of the L going down, kind of like halfway up. So Luando is a coastal city. In the northern part of Angola, so that's where they took off from north, northern central part of Angola, on the coast. So that's where they took off, and they took off into the sunset. So that means that they probably traveled across the South Atlantic Ocean. Did they go to the Bermuda Triangle? Because that's that direction, bro. So moments before disappearance. Okay. At 5 p.m. local time on May 25th, 03, the Boeing 727 taxied out on the run day. I'm sorry, the run day, the runway, without communication. What way? Direct, uh, west? Does it say? No. Oh, okay, nailed it. So, yeah, at 5, they left the runway without communicating with the control tower. Okay, so sunrise in the east, that's in the west. So that if they were flying off into the sunset and they left at 5 p.m., that means that they were traveling west. Continue. Despite the continuous efforts by the tower officers to contact the pilot in command, the aircraft maneuvered erratically and lined up on the runway with no clearance and took off, heading towards southwest over the Atlantic Ocean. Dude, th- I mean, this is, like, right out of GTA. Like, I don't care about <laughs> traffic controllers. I don't care. Like, doesn't matter to me. The thing that's astonishing is that the aircraft had been filled with 53,000 liters of fuel prior to the unscheduled takeoff, giving it a range of 2,400 kilometers. With many theories out there, none have been proven to explain the disappearance of the tail nomenclature. I'm just going to name it that. In July 03, a possible sighting of the missing aircraft was reported in Guinea. But it was conclusively dismissed by the U.S. State's Department of States. With less than two years, with 9-11, the U.S. searched intensively for the aircraft in multiple countries like Sri Lanka, Nigeria, but failed to come to conclusion due to the lack of evidence. In 2004, a sister told the South Florida Sun, the Sentinel newspaper, that her family suspected that the brother was flying the aircraft against his will and subsequently crashed somewhere in Africa. However, the U.S. authority has suspected the plane's owners deliberately made the aircraft disappear to collect the insurance money as the plane was parked idle at the airport for 14 months and was in a terrible state. So after all these years, the questions remain unanswered with what happened to November 844 Alpha Alpha. Was it hijacked or did it crash over the Atlantic? How many gallons of water or of gas did it have? Dude, a ridiculous amount. 56,000, but how many kilometers was that? It was 53,000 liters to give them a range of 24,000 kilometers. So they could have made it to Bermuda. Bermuda is only 9,000 kilometers away, 10,000 kilometers away. Yeah. <clears throat> so this thing was never found. Did you ever, you never watched Manifest, right? No, but everyone knows the Bermuda Triangle. Well, I, Manifest isn't the Bermuda Triangle. Manifest is like this realm that they passed through and like they left this area i forgot i haven't watched the show in a while but they left this area is it over i don't know if it's over or not if there's another season but anyway they left this area and they flew through this like storm and this storm transported them five years later but they were this still the same age they just came home and everything else was five years ahead that's what this reminds me they just flew through this black hole maybe we'll find them in 10 years what i mean dude what would 
what would you do if you and I solo are flying? Me and you, right? We're in a plane, and all of a sudden we enter. No, no, no. We're crashing. You think either of us, we don't know how to file our taxes. You think we can file or we can fly a plane? We set this whole thing up. We don't know where to. We built walls. (laughs) We insulated ceilings. We don't know. Dude, we don't know what we're doing. We could fly a plane. Do you honestly think we would figure it out? YouTube University would allow us to figure it out. (laughs) And survival, man. Survival. I can learn real fast when I have no other option. I proved that multiple times in my life but so far. But flying a plane, though? I can make it work. I can make it work. Increase your speed, generate enough <laughs> lift, you're staying in the air. <laughs> okay, but what about landing? The most pivotal part of flying. It you wouldn't matter. land? It wouldn't matter because we're entering a black hole. Could you imagine flying through a black hole together, and then we look at each other, and we're like, where are we? I don't know, bro. <laughs> what about our life? Guess we're starting over. That would happen as soon as we take off, regardless of black hole or not. Where are we, bro? I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is how we live now. If I were to st- if I were just to take a massive 757 and fly it somewhere, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. I appreciate that. Thank you. But yeah, that's that's crazy. So they were flying southwest, which is not where the Bermuda Triangle is. That's going around South America. Dude, maybe they landed in like a weird, obscure spot in Antarctica and died. Is there any potential civilization in Antarctica? I know Metallica did a, a concert there, right? Or was yeah, that the I, Arctic? I know a guy that just got back. From Antarctica? Yeah. He, t- he took a vacation there. It was planned for like two and a half years. There's no cities there, are there? No, there's just... Uh, mm, there's communities. Are there? Mm-hmm. You essentially go and just look at penguins. You just... You, like, you site visit, essentially. It's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. I didn't know that there were actually things... So, are there any cities in Antarctica? There are no cities in Antarctica. However, Correct. many countries have established research stations and bases across yes. the Antarctic continent. So hence, that's where Metallica played, right? Hence communities. Yeah. yeah, they played at a research camp, basically. And then you can't have any amps. It was like two or Coke Zero or whatever. We talked about it on a previous yeah. episode. So Antarctica, 10 largest cities, McMurdo stations. So why do we have stations there? For science. We're we're checking out animals, we're checking on glacier elements, we're checking at, like the the overall where are we at, like climate change, all that type of research. So we're checking on glaciers, we're checking on everything regarding Antarctica overall. So Antarctica is a place that everybody just has access to? You can go there for a vacation, yeah. It's not cheap, but you can do it. The the Antarctic Treaty was signed in Washington. On the 1st of December, 1959, by 12 nations that have been active during the IGY. Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, United Kingdom, United States, and the USSR. So all these people have access to Antarctica? hmm Dude, that's wild. But you have to sail there. Do you? Yeah. yeah How you do you s- do that? You sail there. You leapfrog. You go from land to land, like landmass to landmass. It's fascinating. And you barely and, have cell phone service, obviously. Antarctica is the only place on the planet where land isn't officially owned by anyone. That's wild. What about the Arctic? Isn't the Arctic north? You mm-hmm. can own land in the Arctic? Check. Can you own land in the Arctic? Good question. I have no clue. I don't really have a reason to go there. I mean, I guess it'd be cool to see, but, like, I don't know. You can search that in YouTube and just watch it for four hours in 4K, you know? like, And they'll probably have some really cool music to back it up. So, under international law, the North Pole and the region of the Arctic Ocean surrounding it are not owned by any country. All right, there you go. Is it possible to buy a house or land in the Arctic Circle as a U.S. citizen and thrive? That's a quora article and that doesn't answer anything ownership of once unexplored land dude that'd be so fascinating like we still have land in the world that isn't owned by anybody that makes me happy honestly we should not ruin it right i mean we have already ruined space talked about this last night yeah but anyways weekly recap what's going on what's your week i haven't seen you in forever i've just been working 
I know. Nothing has been exciting. Come on. I've been working. I've been golfing. I've been hanging out, doing nothing. Golf is exciting. Yeah, but to me, not to anybody else. Nobody else likes golf. The I've been watching the PGA Tour events. The Players' Championship is this weekend, which is going to be super exciting. I got Aurora's to win it all. But other than that, I don't know. Me and my buddy are talking about buying a golf simulator and putting it in a warehouse, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but, yeah, we're just, we're just hanging out. I've been so busy with work. He's moving. It's not him. Different buddy. You don't have that many friends. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I do. I don't like this, Derek. I'm very protective. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to find a way to spend all my money. Correct. That, that's where I'm at. Yeah, who cares about 401s? Right, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's how much a, a simulator costs. It's $401,000. Um, but anyway... So that's really my w- weekly recap. I didn't do anything exciting. I worked with our buddies over at the Briar Brothers. Mm-hmm. I was over there hanging out, dishing out beers. The easiest job in the entire world. I'm actually going to be there on Saturday hanging out beers for the Shamrock Run because that's passing through the old South Ward. Right. And um, that's where we're at. So nothing crazy on my end. I mean, I know that you've had a busy week because your bathroom has currently exploded and not because of you being in there, but because right. someone else being in there. Yes. Tell the people about it. I'm renovating the bathroom in my house. So why? It needed a facelift. The problem is I can't not work. So I took my new job in September 2022. It was 2022, right? No, 2023 cuz I'm going or I'm sorry, 2021 cuz I'm going on 2 years. So 2021, I get back from my honeymoon, I start my new job, my wife and I start saving for this project from when I started at my new job. So we finally saved enough money to do this project. I grab my coworker, good friend of mine, and we gut the entire bathroom Mm -hmm. down to the subfloor, removing finished nails, down to studs. Remove everything. I update the insulation. I take everything out of the house. I set the guys up for success. I hang my own plastic. I put my own floor coverings down. The nine, right? The problem is, is that I'm in residential construction and I'm a, I'm a project manager. I'm, I'm literally <laughs> the production manager for the company that I work at. So I'm every single week following tracking and making sure we're set for anywhere from 15 to 25 jobs a week and it and it go all right i'm drinking (laughs) and it covers all of western new york into rochester so like it's i'm talking gowanda to wilson new york all the way across to rochester and brockport etc like name it we're there it's a lot of it's a lot of moving parts And now I can't not work when it comes to the, my own home and my own bathroom renovation. And I know every inspector. So I know the inspector who's going to walk into my house and I know the codes because I have to, it's part of my job. So I'm quasi project manager for my own bathroom renovation, which it's a good and a bad thing. Right. So... We're down to studs. They're doing everything. New tub is in. Plumbing and electrical is good. The inspector calls me after talking to the project manager who's on site for the inspection. And he's like, hey, you passed. You're good. Just wanted to double tap because now with our municipality, we also enforce an electrical inspection for new electrical. I'm like... I got it. So I reach out to the electrician who was subcontracted by the GC because they don't have an electrician on staff because for those that are out of state, it's more liability, it's more insurance, it's more uh, licenses, the nine, to be a licensed electrician and a journeyman <clears throat> where we are. It's it's a bunch of bureaucratic red tape. So I'm like, I'll I'll double tap it. Don't worry about it. He's like, okay, sounds good. So then I call the project manager and I'm like, 
electrical inspection when that's being set up. And the electrician that they use is down the street from my own work. So mm. I can just call them and I'm just like, hey, like this is, you know, where are we at? Here's the address. I'm the homeowner. I wanted to make sure this is set up. It was set up, so we're good. We're going to pass. There's no issues. So now new tub, the new surround liners in for the shower, um, all the drywalls in, the plumbing is updated, the electrical is updated. We're fired up. I mean, they're on track to finish in two days. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. The problem that I run into with myself, you're going to laugh, is I staged all of the materials because I bought the materials. I, I paid the contractor to do the finishing work. I do the demo. I'm giving you what I want installed. I just need you to do it, mm -hmm. right? So I have everything lined up and staged on the kitchen floor in front of the plastic barrier that I threw up in the kitchen in order of how you would install it. And I have it lined up. And when I had the pre-inspection for the job, the project manager looked at me and he's like, Jesus, like, okay, like, got it. Do my job for me. Right. Yeah. And he's like, this is this is insane. And I said, we're, we're good. Like, I already have all the updated electrical codes. I got all the smoke and CO detectors. I got the CO detector in the bottom. Like, I'm in the hallway. Like, the nine. Like, we're good. So I swing in every single day. Not to be annoying, but to make sure, like, are we good? Like, am I going to be screwed, right? Just to check on it. Because I worked in the day. I'm not home the entire time to, like, analyze it. So I'm asking questions. Yesterday I show up, and the electrician's outside having a smoke break because he's done. And I go, how did the basement go? And I phrased it like that on purpose because I was testing to see if he knew that I needed a hardwired smoke and CO detector in the basement for code. Because I know the inspector. I know what he looks for. And he looks at me, and he, like, tilted his head quick, and then he, like, fixed it and then looked at me. And I'm like, I I know you didn't do it yet. I can already tell. Like, I, bro, I got, I, I'm in charge of 15 crews. Mm -hmm. Like, I already know you, you didn't do that based off of your response. Like, come here. I'm like, here. And I gave him the actual detector that I needed installed. And then I gave him the wire if he needed to run it to the panel. I'm like, here you go. And I got room in my panel. Here's a breaker. Like, you're good. And then he goes, I don't need the wire. I got the wire. He goes, but let me see your basement. He goes, where do you want it? And I said, better yet, I'm going to move the location so it makes sense for you so it's easier. And he's like, okay. So we go in the basement. I have an outlet. I have a drop-down light bulb. And the pull string broke. Because what? How a pull string works, for those that have absolutely no electrical knowledge, the pull string on a light bulb in a basement or whatever, when you pull it, it moves, it toggles a switch inside the actual light bulb housing, and it moves it and then continues to connect the circuit to then turn the light bulb on. If the pull string is bad, it doesn't move that switch. So he looked at it, and he pulled it, and he goes, yeah, your pull string is bad. I said, use that housing then. And he's like, and he's thinking, and he just like looks around, and I said, I, we're good. Use that. Here's why. And I said, you're, you know, you're seven feet four inches from all the combustible appliances, meaning the boiler and the hot water tank, and you're five feet from the panel. You have to be ten foot or within from both. Mm. I said, so you already meet code. Swap that with a hardwired smoke and CO. The wires already ran. There's already a breaker for it. Rock and roll. Just put the CO detector in. You don't have to worry about it. And he just looked at me, and he's like, he's never met me before. And he's like, all right. He's like, yeah, that meets code. I'm like, I know. And he's like, whoa, oh, all right. Two minutes. I don't even think he's going to charge me for it because I did the work for him. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, right. yeah, you're good, dude. Like, just throw it up in there. So everything was set. I updated the insulation on the exterior wall. I ripped out the old, put new in. And then stapled it in there, ripped everything out, took out all Back the old- in the bathroom, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So in the bathroom, yep. The exterior wall of the bathroom, mm -hmm. all that's brand new insulation, insulation up in the attic, <clears throat> brand new ceiling fan, ducted right out. Uh, dude, I'm so excited for this to be done. Brand new shower, tub, liner. It's all going to be white. It's all going to be clean. No tile anywhere. And then you're selling, and then you'll have to do this again in your new house. Well, hopefully, the new house, I don't have to do anything insane, but we'll see. You will. 
I'm, I'm especially sure. for our price point. I'm sure if I you're will. looking to buy it. I know. You're gonna have to. I know. I know. But hopefully, I got the the liquid to not ba- pay anybody. Yeah, bathroom's gonna be like out of like myself horror house. You know. Yeeks. <laughs> This is just going to be wood planks, and then you got to be like, all right, sweet. There's no insulation here at all. But we're, I mean, we're super, ex- it's its a massive upgrade to the mm-hmm. entire home. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be huge. Does that mean you're not moving? Well, no, we're going to have to. We're going to have to. Maybe on the way, we don't want to be in that school district, we're forced. But it's going to immediately increase the equity in the home. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, bro, we're so fired up. You can put the baby downstairs next to the boiler. We'll be fine. <laughs> Could. <laughs> But I think a lot of it comes down to like we've, you know, we've been saving for this specific project for two years. You know, when it like it's finally happening, like her and I have both been working towards the same goal and it's finally coming to fruition. And it's just like it it literally destroys that nonsense of money doesn't buy happiness. Like money bought my dog. He makes me happy every single day. You know, like it's. Try giving a homeless person money and see them not be happy. I think like lifting somebody out of homelessness is the most. It has to be the most happiness that they've ever felt in their entire life. Money I, does buy happiness. It's just when you're at five million versus six million. Sure, that doesn't buy happiness because now you're just a prick. Right. But if you're literally helping somebody out in our tax bracket, money still buys happiness. And I think a lot of it too is when you earn your money. And you earn the you know the project mm-hmm. or whatever you're buying, right? Like that's that's happiness mm-hmm. because you've earned it. Like yeah. you are part of that journey, and you can see it to fruition. And it's just it's really cool. It's really cool to do this and not have to necessarily worry about buying more mud or right. whatever. Like it's it's the contractor; <clears throat> he's got it. It's yeah. just really it's exciting, and it's dude, it sucks. It's really hard to just be a homeowner because I'm so used to work. Like mm-hmm. I can't. I don't know. Just leave the contractor alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I catch myself where I'm like, I want to ask a question. And I'm like, mm, let me think of a more pertinent question to ask. Mm-hmm. Because more than not, I can just look, take a half second, and then deduce and answer my initial question. But let me ask him a deeper question and see, sure. like, hey, are we good? And then so far it's been like, yeah, we're fine. Like, we did that. I'm like, all right, perfect. Yeah. So it's good. I mean, it's. I'm learning a lot from it. I'm. I can't wait for it to be over with. I'm excited. So, new bathroom. Love that. And then shower party at your house after. Huh? So I'm talking about oh, me yeah. and you. Oh yeah. yeah, perfect. None of the housewives. Yeah, just two. Thank you everybody for tuning in to today's episode. Today we talked about a crazy useless fact, and then we also talked about Mike's bathroom rental. So if you were interested in today's conversation, please leave a like. And comment down below what your favorite part of today's episode was and if you knew about today's useless fact, because I sure did it, and it's pretty fascinating to me. Also, do you know about that an article doesn't actually house any civilizations? It's just kind of just like science. It's crazy. All right. But anyway, we'll talk to you guys next week. Please remember our drink response, vegan person, and Michael. Do not litter. We're out.